Hello everybody. So today I'm just gonna go over some thinkorswim little kind of tools or tricks or whatever that I use. Uh, I trade throughout the day, been trading for 18 years and the one thing that I cannot stand when I'm trading is I don't like charts with a whole bunch of lines or distractions. I really want things nice and simplistic. So what you see here like S&P futures, that's kind of how I like to look at it. So I'll go through a few things that I like in thinkorswim it's practical, it's easy to use. They have a great paper trading uh, kind of demo that everybody should use. Why not paper trade? Okay, I've been trading for, it's the only thing I've ever done. And if I'm gonna use a new trade, I'm always gonna paper trade. Prove it to myself that it works. If it works on paper, then let's go live, but not until I prove it works, okay? I'm much better off taking two weeks paper trading, figure out it works, then get into the market. And that kind of discipline helps. That kind of discipline keeps you in the biz. So here's what I like about Thinkorswim. Nice clean chart looking at the S&Ps. For one, bottom right here, this little expansion area. If you click it, change right expansion. For me, I like a little room on the right. You can put 50 if you want. That's a little too much. But for me, 10 plenty just presents better. So I take that to 10. I always like that. Whenever I'm... Charting, if you want historical data, you can go here and go back to some you know previous time periods. The other thing that I really like with Thinkorswim, which is really easy. So the way that I trade is every trade I make is relative value, okay? I'm a big believer that nothing is ever cheap, nothing is ever expensive, okay? We can't look at anything in a vacuum. Everything needs to be cheap relative to something that's expensive, okay? Two homes both $300,000, which one's better value? Well, one, $70 per square foot in that area, but the house B in a totally different area, they trade for $130 per square foot, okay? So one is gonna be cheap relative to the other. So when I'm doing analysis, looking for different trades, if you go over here to this little beaker thing or flask, I've been told, it's a flask, not a beaker, Give it a little click. You can see all the different indicators. Wow, we look at that. That's about a hundred different indicators right there. And now if I click on one and start messing around with the uh, different permutations here, which you could just go right here, click. You no, know, twenty-one. Okay, all the different permutations. I mean, there's got to be over a billion indicators then. So. Be careful, guys. A lot of that stuff is just absolute junk. Let me take that off. But what I do like is I do like the comparison. So comparison, you just go down to Add Selected. Comes up here. Now if I open it up. And let's compare it to, let's compare it to the NASDAQ. So I hit this little sun. Forward slash NQ. We don't need it on the left axis. Just need a color that's not the same. Okay, apply, okay. There you go. And that's what that looks like, okay? And now I can change the time period and it's gonna change with it. But the number one thing that you have to do, and I did it before, is if you go up again to the sun up here, you need to go to price. And you need to show the price as a percentage. So watch what happens if I take this off, apply, okay. That's what it's going to look like, right? Because then what it's doing is just overlapping the prices and that's going to be useless. But if we do this with the sun here or the cog or whatever it is, price, show price as a percentage, apply, okay. Then we could start looking relative value. And what this means is the yellow is going to be NASDAQ. The blue, excuse me, the blue is going to be NASDAQ. The yellow is going to be the S&Ps. And if I put it on a week, and it's going back to late 2013, they're both starting at zero. They're both starting at the same time period, so it's a fair race, it's a fair analysis. So if I move it down to an hourly, now they're gonna go back to this date, which is about a month ago, 9.15, it's 10.13 today. They're both starting at zero, so you can see the relative movement from that point, okay? really really helpful and it's something i use 
an absolute ton. So that's how I use it. Again, beaker, the sun, change your time periods, nice and simplistic, but I love relative value trading. I'm always overlapping things. I like to look at gold against silver. I like to look at the different bonds, the 10 year against the 30 year, the five year against the 10 year, okay? Get creative. This is a great tool that really allows you to be creative in the trade and look for opportunities that nobody else is looking for. That's what trading is all about. Hope this helps. You have any questions? Email me directly, Jonathan at activedaytrader.com. Thanks for watching, guys.